All right, so we need to start with the base and for that we're going to use our thick wire. Um, as I said, in the uh, materials, if you don't have square, uh, round works just as well. I just like to wear with square because it holds its shape better for the sort of thing and it's got more structure to it. So we need to leave about five centimeters longer on one end than the other because that is the side that's going to have the swirl in it. Uh, but you'll see what I mean by that just now. So we're creating a bend with our round nose pliers um, and bring the wires together so that you have a little bit of a narrowing space there. And then we're going to bend these wires back out again, like so. And that creates a little loop at the top. Now the wire is quite thick, so it'll be hard to manipulate. Um, you may just take a bit of time to get used to it. Um, but eventually you'll you'll figure out how to work it. If you've not done this before with thick wire, um, it's just a, a bit harder to work than your thinner wires, but eventually you get used to it. So what we're going to do next is then shape the bottom sections into a sort of oval shape that will then house the oval pendant that we're going to be using, or the oval capuchon rather. So just reference it back um, and kind of make sure that it is just slightly bigger than the oval itself. It just takes a little bit of manipulation until you're happy. Just take your time with this. I'm trying not to spend too much on this since we're doing a tutorial here so that I don't bore you with the same technique over and over again. So I'm just rushing it a bit here. So bend it in the right shape and then just keep manipulating until you're happy. And the bottom sections should kind of overlap and lie parallel on top of each other. And always reference back to your stone. Oops, so just keep adjusting until these fit and try and be as symmetrical as possible with this because that all translates into your design later and um, so I always my philosophy with this is always try and be as neat as I can from the start that way I won't um, have to fix things later so next we're taking the longer end remember how I said this one side needs to be about five centimeters longer so we're going to loop this around itself and I'm going to shape this into like a sort of snail bring in your runner's pliers for the ends and obviously the wire is quite thick so it's going to be difficult to manipulate but just keep at it and then take your time with that and it'll it'll fall into place and then obviously just keep adjusting until you're happy with the sizing next we're going to create a little loop at the bottom now this is optional you don't really need to do that um i just liked to have a little section at the bottom here so take your run those pliers and loop around the bottom section like so. And it's always better to have a little bit of leverage. So when you have thick wire like that, it's very difficult to bend short sections at the end. So that's why I always usually work with a little bit longer wire than I really need to, because it's just so much easier to work with when you have a bit of an end to hold on to. So next, shape the loop with a pair of pliers until you're happy and just try and make it as central as possible to the pendant and then trim off the end of the wires now you'll need some industrial cutters for that because otherwise you'll ruin your good pair of pliers which obviously we don't want to do so have a heavy duty pair of cutters available if you can um, and then just keep adjusting that little loop with your pliers and i said my my i said this in other videos before my Bent nose pliers are the best tool ever for me because I just use them for literally everything. They just seem to work so well with every application. So that's a little swirl we need to make um, and just keep cross-referencing it. So I've switched it down a bit as you can see here and this is so that the wire work is hidden behind the oval. So you need to make sure that it's hidden because obviously we don't want it to be seen in the design. So next take a piece of um half round wire now if you don't have half round you can use round as well this is simply just to bind the uh, bottom sections together 
Um, so anything works as well. I just tend to use half round because it works so well for that sort of application. So just keep wrapping. And we're going to cross around the other side of the little loop at the bottom. Um, obviously there's nothing there to attach so we're just going to continue wrapping around the um the bottom wire to keep the um the symmetry the same so that there's a little bit of weave on each side of the loop not that you'll see much of it at the end but uh, i'll do that anyway next trim off the little ends and always make sure that you trim off wires where they're hidden so that they can't snag on clothing um, or anything else that you you know that wire might get caught on so i always tend to trim my wires off on the inside so reference against your stone and make sure it all fits and um, that's perfect so now next on to the next step then just keep adjusting it a little bit more and then always wrong cross reference there you go that fits so i lost the other stone somehow i was sitting down even i didn't even get up or do anything and um, i couldn't find it so i had to create a whole new frame uh, with a different stone but um, anyway the process is the same so just cut a piece off or two pieces off your round wires we're going to be attaching these to the bottom by wrapping it around the frame on either side twice and um, the reason why I'm doing this twice is so that um, there is more of an of a anchorage, if that's even a word. Um, it needs to have some structure to it. If you wrap it only once, it tends to be quite floppy and not well attached. So I go around it twice. Just try and keep the wires parallel as you're wrapping them, because otherwise they create a bulk if they cross over on the weave. So as you're bringing them through the the base wires over them and wrap them make sure that they just run parallel and as i work you'll see me straightening the wires all the time and um, i just like to do that um so that they keep um straight and they all this sort of technique also warms the wire which makes it a little bit more malleable um and easier to work with so uh win-win for me let's do that again and pull that tight and next we're just going to bring in a bit of uh, 0.4 wire and we are going to create a 2x5 weave and we're just going to go around the top wire you can do this around the bottom or the top wire whichever way you want so I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing. So I've already done a revolution or a set rather. So I'm starting again. So I'm going to go five times around the top. Like so. This is a really basic weave that is used in many, many designs. Um, very popular and also really easy to do. If you haven't done any wire work before, this is a great weave to to start practicing with because um, obviously you're already using two wires rather than just one when you're doing coils so it's a good practice piece to start with so now we go around both of the wires twice and then we start afresh so basically it's five revolutions around one wire and then two revolutions around both wires we're going to do this just on the other side as well so we're going to create um, as many sets as needed on either side so depending on your stone size um, on, and your weaves this will change for you so you just need to kind of adjust that a little bit and see what fits so i'm going to twirl this design and i am then shaping that weave that i have just created around the frame I'm going to do the same on the other side and I try to be as symmetrical as possible uh, when I do this at every stage because the slightest sort of discrepancy um, unfortunately always becomes apparent later on so as I said earlier I just try to be as symmetrical as I can 
um, with all the steps. Not always possible. Some pieces of mine look really wonky because I can't always get it straight. So just try. Um, but I'm sure your pieces will look great. So, so we're going to shape this. And take your time as well um, when you shape this. Rearrange if necessary. And reference against the stone. And then I'm going to take the weaves or the wires rather on the side. And I'm with the 0 0.4 wire still attached. I am wrapping my base wires around the frame a couple of times. Again, twice works. You can do it more if you want, but twice is usually enough. Um, so I tend to like to use weaving wire rather than or you know keep using the same weaving wire rather than adding in so everybody's different um you can add in weaving wire at every stage so that might be easier than um you know working with wire that's still attached just everybody has their preferences is the way i do it um but you can do it as you like whatever's easiest all right so then again a couple of times weaving it wrapping it around and next we're going to create a two by five weave again so this whole design is based on two by fives so it's a super easy um a weave to achieve so it's the same throughout so i won't go into detail every time i do this wrap so that you don't have to watch me you know, wrap the whole length of the weave every single time there is one. So I'm going to cut this out so you don't have to watch me do it. But basically the um, the process is the same as we did with the first weave. There you go. Just always try and keep the wires even. So there's our sets. Again, you need to adjust it for how many weaves you need for your stone and next we're going to move and shape this weave around and over the stone now your stone isn't attached yet so it will still be quite loose um so i'm just referencing the stone against the weave so i'm having it in place and i'm shaping this weave and then attaching the wire to the frame like so Again, a couple of times should be sufficient. And if need be, I'm using my pliers to kind of line them up again. Um, as I said earlier, um, they really should be parallel to each other. So it doesn't create a bulky section on your frame. When they cross over, it can create quite the, um, quite the mountain on the side there, which is quite unsightly. So try and keep them parallel. A little bit of uh, pulling will actually... Uh, pull the wire tighter against the frame if you've seen me doing this there quite a helpful little technique I've learned um, then do the same on the other side so shape it and kind of twist the wire upwards a little bit that way it, you don't actually have to use a pair of pliers to straighten it out again um, and then shape it and attach to the frame like you did with the other side of the wire or, or the pendant rather. So once it's attached, that's what it looks like. And now we're going to bring in some more weaving wire and we're going to again create two by fives um, on both sides um, of the pendant with the four wires that we have. So same process again, five times around the bottom. And then you can push your weave together with your fingernails. And that's what it looks like on the one side. We're going to flip the pendant over. I always find it's easier to work from bottom up to the top. So that's why I always flip my work so that I can always weave in the same direction, which I found um, hugely helpful. So you don't have to either weave on the left or the right. It's not really applicable when you have complicated weaves, though. So now we've done our weaves on either side and again we're going to shape it um, I'm going to bring this the both weaves through the middle of the pendant so feed it through and 
and we are going to then pull this tight and if need be you can use your pliers if you give them a little bit of a wiggle it tightens everything up quite nicely and then this is just going to be a little detail now I'm going to shape these around the bottom again and place these underneath the first weave. So I'm going to do the same with the other side. And once we've attached it, we can then shape it and reference back against the stone. So next going to attach these wires to the frame so i'm going to feed them in a convenient place and um, make sure that you can attach it somewhere it's anchored against or behind some other wire on on the frame so that it can't slide upwards it's not really a necessity but if you can that's great and um, we're going to squash the wire against the frame anyway so it's tightened up after we've want if we've attached it once so feed your wire through and then wrap it twice or even three times. Um, I de it depends what I like look wise. So you decide. So once these are attached, we are then going to trim them off. I decided to go about twice around the frame, and then I'm going to bend it in. And remember to trim your wires off on the inside of the frame. And then what I'm going to do is use my bent nose pliers again. To wrap these wires around the frame completely out of the way so they don't snag. So next we're going to add some accent beads at the bottom. So I'm using a 0.6 wire uh, because that's the only wire that fits through my beads. If you can, you can use a, a 0.8 millimeter wire as well. Um, because obviously the weaves that we're going to create with this later on will look better but for me it just didn't fit through my copper bead so it had to be a 0.6 so we fold this piece of wire in half and we are going to attach this little loop that's created with the wire in place to the loop on the pendant at the bottom like a noose and we are going to attach and pull this tight and shift this out of the way so that it doesn't confuse um, or distract rather. So I'm going to pull this tight. So that's nice and snug. And next we're going to add all the accent beads to one wire on each side. That's it. So open up and I have added here from 5 mil to 2 mil. So depending on obviously your stone size or the weave or whatever you have created, you need to decide what you'd like to put. Or even the materials you have, you may not have copper beads. So if you have any uh, round gemstones, maybe 2 to 4 mil, you can use those instead. Um, so that's the wires attached. And what we're going to do is go around the the center of the pendant and we're going to be attaching this wire to the side of the frame um, and bring it out in between those two weaves on either side because this is going to be the starting point for a new weave at a later stage let's wrap it around the frame a couple of times as i said bring it out in between both weaves we're going to do the same on the other side And just as you shaping it, press it against the stone so that it kind of follows um, the weave that we have put around the frame previously, like so. Remember your stone isn't yet attached, so it's still going to be quite loose.
go around it again just to make sure that it's nice and tight and then I always squash the wraps with my pair of pliers to make it more uh, rigid and stable so that's what it looks like with everything intact and always take time to rearrange the weaves and and whatever else you want to arrange as you work and that will help with the overall finish so next we're finally going to attach that stone in place the reason why i'm doing this at this later stage when i'm adding this wire um, is um, i want to hide it so i wanted to have a couple of weaves in place that cover the stone already so that i have a reference point um, as to how much wire or how much of a twist which you will see just now i need to do uh, in order to hide the wires running across the stone because obviously we don't want the anchors to be visible so i'm going to wrap these a couple of times around the frame and that's why i said earlier the frame needs to be kind of the shape of the stone um, and just hidden by the stone so that we can use use it um, as an anchor point squish these together next feed the wires or in fact first we're going to twist the wires a couple of times maybe four or five twists it's enough is enough and um, we just want it to run over the width of the stone when we bring it to the front we've done the twisting so we're bringing it to the front Just make sure it's nice and central. And then we're going to be using the wire and this will keep the stone in place. I want it to be hidden by the weeds on the side. So now find a place where you can anchor it so that it hugs the stone but can't slip out over the back. And try when you bring the wire through to weave it and create a hole somewhere so you can pull it through existing weeds already to give it a bit more structure. There we go, pull that tight and then obviously go around the frame a couple of times. And that's how it looks so far. So just pull it tight. Obviously, as I said, try not to have the wire slip it's quite easy to have that happen if you pull too tight so try not to have it slip over the stone and next we're going to weave it around the frame as i said try and weave this wire now through existing structure so that it has more grip onto the frame use your pliers if need be and then pull that tight and then bring that wire that you're wrapping out So there we go so once we've done that we are going to now do the two by five again so it's five times around the bottom push your weave down I find this quite helpful to do to use my pliers when I start a weave because it's quite difficult in the beginning. So we're going to repeat this on both sides. So here we are, these are our weaves and we are now shaping these weaves around the very first or the second weave and we're going to place it on the top of the, well I would say I call it a, it's not a bale really but the, um, the anchor hoop at the top. So we're going to wrap it around the frame there a couple of times again twice is enough arrange your wires make sure they're parallel with a pair of pliers we'll do the same on the other side and that's how it looks like so far so we're going to create a weave for the um section at the top 
So going to bring in some more weaving wire. So again, it's the two by five. You see, I'm using my fingernails to push the weave in place. Works better when you have longer fingernails. I have to keep cutting mine because uh, wire working isn't very kind to my fingers. So mine stays short. And just repeat. So this is what it looks like. So again, as I said, depending on your um, design, you need to adjust the amount of weaves you have. I've just listed the weaves that I have used in my design. You may need to adjust it a bit for yours. So next we're going to shape this. And again, attach it to the frame like we've done with all the others. So I'm going to go with about two or three wraps around the main frame. Um, the wrapping of the wire itself can actually be a feature as well. If they are parallel and neatly done, it looks quite nice as a, as a sort of detail on the frame. So always pay attention to those wraps to be quite neat if I possibly can, can make them neat. Just going to repeat the other side and again try and be symmetrical if possible. Use your pliers if need be. And then we're going to attach the wires on either side. So next, once you have finished with all of that, we're going to trim off all the excess wires. And remember, we need to go inside and cut off where it's not visible. There you go. So next, um, the top is a little bit flimsy, so I'd like to make sure I tie these together. So bring a short piece of your half round. As I said, round also works. Um, and just create two or three wraps around the two uppermost weaves as they are a little bit loose. And this will give the whole piece a bit more structure. smooth it out half round has a tendency to twist and once that's happened it's really difficult to fix it um so it's imperative to try and keep it straight because um ask me how i know <laughs> so i'm going to feed this through and um pull this tight and it's easier to work with shorter wire rather than too long a wire trim off the ends Again, underneath where possible, and then shape. And that's that. So it's time for the accents. Now, this is also a personal preference. Um, I've decided to go with um, copper beads on the outside and the preonite uh, round for the center. Um, whatever you have available, whatever you think looks nice works as well. Um, so you just anchor them in a place to on the frame that makes sure it's all secure. And I've used 0.6 to attach them because I always find 0.4 is a little bit too flimsy to uh, create good strength when attaching accents. So 0.6, whenever I can use it, is my go-to wire for that sort of thing. Or even 0.8 if I can reuse those wires as a base wire for a weave, for example. So... Um, this is the way I do it, but again, everybody's different. The last one. I'm just going to attach to the frame again. 
just make sure that it's nice nicely pulled tight so that the beads don't look loose when you wear the pendant there you go and do the same on the other side and that's what it looks like so next we're going to bring in the central piece which is just a four mil bead um, of pre night as i said whatever you have available and i'm going to go if you remember we had two wires that we have brought across the stone to keep it in place and i'm going to take the point six and feed it through the point six wire that's running across the stone that will help anchor it and then i'm going to pull that through and attach it to the um the base so pull that tight the weave that over the front will prevent the stone from slipping out now obviously don't pull too tight otherwise it'll just be pulled through so I'm just going to wrap these a couple of times around the frame pull tight and obviously do this two or three times especially with a loose single wire like that it needs to be anchored properly so do that until the stone sits tight that's that so we're going to trim off the wires again as i said before uh, when you trim off wires always do that at the most hidden place possible and that's that so your last step is to just add your drop um and um that's it Thank you so much for watching and um, please join our little wire community on Facebook. Um, the group is called Wire Wrap and Jewelry Artists Worldwide. Um, and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials. Um, you can visit me on any of the um, social media. I've got Instagram, Facebook and TikTok and I am available on any of these. Um, I'd love for you to pop by and um, thank you very much.